Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm I'm very well. How are you today? Happy thank birthday. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing now? I'm I'm fine. Oh, I'm happy today. You know, yeah, it's, it's interesting for me because I was thinking about it today. When we originally scheduled this, I would do yeah. I didn't know it was on your birthday, you know. So when yeah. I heard it was your birthday, I was surprised that wow, that you actually agreed to do something like this on your birthday. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome, you're welcome. So what's happening? How is general like football? How is everything? How is life? How is everything? I mean, everything is good. I mean, we're trying. We're all trying our best to cope with this situation. You know. So yeah, it's been very difficult. It's very very difficult though. Yes. So. And um, we just thought it would be nice to give the fans an opportunity to hear from you. You know. Um, Absolutely. I don't, I, don't, I don't know about other people, but for me, I mean, I I would say I don't hear too much from you or about what you're doing and what you're you know that we don't i know i know i know because uh you know because nigeria we are kind of country that as soon as you stay playing for national team you will see a lot of things but as soon as you're not playing for national team again nobody even care about you but but the most important thing for me i still have life that's most important thing for me yeah. so Okay, um, so first of all, so how are you feeling today, you know, how are you celebrating your birthday, I'm guessing in quarantine? Yeah, man. Alice, I'm very happy that I'm still alive today, I thank God for today because uh, uh, today is one of like, it's a very special day for me today, you know what I'm saying, so like, I'm very, very happy today, so that is why I purpose to choose today for you, so that I can, at least, I can give you the time though, so. Thank you, thank you very so much. Really happy. Yeah, You're welcome. Um, so, so, yeah. Um, aside talking to us today, you know, are you, uh, I don't know, did you buy a cake for yourself, you know? You... Uh, because actually, everywhere is close, there's no way it's happening, so by even so okay, you want to go and buy a cake, so, so we have to obey what the government, they say, so that's why we need to, at least, what the government say, then we obey the government, so we have to just be there, we don't need to even say, like, uh, maybe to try to do our own things, because... Nobody's part for government in this world, so, <laughs> so that's it. And um, just out of curiosity, I'm just wondering, where are you currently, where are you doing your quarantine? I'm in uh, Milan now, Italy. Oh, yeah, Milan. Oh, wow. That's one, yeah. of, one of the epicenters of the whole... Yeah, situation now, so... Wow. This has been at least, this is where I live, since all this while. Wow. Mm. I've been here, so... Yeah, okay. Um, so, um, um, is it, are you with family or are you by yourself right now? No, no, no. Actually, before the situation, so my family, they're in Nigeria now. Mm. So, I'm here alone. Um, so, at least, you know, take care of yourself. It would have been nice if you could celebrate your family, your birthday with your family, but you'll make the best of it, I would imagine. Yeah, because, uh, you know, as a football life, uh, as a footballer, our life is kind of like, sometimes it's... um. I can imagine sometimes we are always there, we are always here, we are everywhere. So sometimes you never know. Because yeah. we've been planning this thing that we never know that the situation is going to be. Because I should be like for myself, I've been flying my, I've been flying one way like to be in Nigeria, to stay with my family, with my friend, with my brother, every one of them. But at the situation, I can't do nothing. So. Okay. Um, so let me just quickly um, acknowledge all your fans in the comments. Um, everybody is saying, I greet you. Happy birthday. Thank you Happy very birthday. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, everyone of you. Thank you. You have some fans here from QPR. Um, some Thank fans you. here from Marseille. Um, Thank you. Fussy Hype is giving you love from Canada. Um, wow. Thank you very much. So, yeah, Thank you me. have a lot of people that are wishing you well and everything. Thank um, so you very much. Today, Thank we're you. just trying to, you know, talk a little bit, um, get to know some things that maybe we might not have heard in the media or in the news about how it's um, mm -hmm. about yourself your playing career and um i also have a few questions fun questions a few games that i want to play with you you know since it's your birthday i said okay let's make it a little bit more fun <laughs> um so yeah um the first thing that i want to ask um as quickly as you can you know just take us through your um journey from a boy um when did you start playing football what got you interested in playing football what made you chase a professional career as opposed to something else uh, because as a footballer, I've been, I have to say my mom, she did a lot of things in my life though, because she's passed away also. So I'll, uh, 
I was a little boy then when we are seen moving around, at least most of the boys that we have, actually my senior brother, he was the one that is, all my family, all my sister, every one of them, they only give me like 100% to play the football because this is where we live with this one. Well, when there is no food at home, we go out there to go and play football as a street in the street. Like with my friend, we are only, always walk around with five players, one goalkeeper sometimes, at least to play like five v five. Yeah. I think we there where we make money, then we share the money. Everybody go back <laughs> home. We give to our family, father and sister, every one of them. So since then, they always like they give me the opportunity to continue to play football. And I'm just wondering, do you remember the first moment or the first time that maybe you went, you played a game, you played in a competition, that somebody walked up to you and told you you are special, you know, this boy, you have a gift. Yeah, because I always when we always play on this like uh, in the street all the time though in Lagos. Then my our firstborn, he always like uh, my one of my, is like a pillar in our house though. So whatever he say, we always listen to him because he's the firstborn. Then he say, okay, sometimes tell you know we need to travel a lot because I'm from Lagos. Sometimes I go to like Songo like uh, Ejibo, like uh, a lot of places to just play football. So as soon as I'm going with my friends, this is our first son in our family. He's the one that will take every one of us with the car, driving, so all this my boys say we have to go and play. Sometimes we don't even have money to pay for the transport. Mm -hmm. But him, he will bring the money out. Then you know that if you go there, we play, then we win the game, we have a lot of money. Yeah. Then we go back home at least to share for our sister, yeah. if you want to play. Okay, so Vincent Yama is here. He's um and Yama himself. Okay. himself. Good to see you, brother. So the next thing that I'm wondering, you know, um, how did you now get that break from just playing um as a kid, you know, like you were saying, just going to win a little money here and there? How did you make that break from um now playing that kind of a thing to getting spotted? by somebody professional and them realizing your real talent? Uh, because I remember we, back in the days, my area when I grew up from Isheri Olofen, so this area we used to train with my brother, with all of my friends that we used to train there. So that was a day, they say we have a friendly game in uh, Niger Dock. Mm. So this day, I don't want to even go to the place to go and play either. They say, no, 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 I don't want to go to this place because they only keep people in the camp. They don't allow you to go outside, all those kind of things, you know. Yeah. Then, then my senior brother said, I know you never know, you have to come with us. So now I walked towards my mom then. Then she said, ah, she don't have so much on that. So you just give me a little thing, so that at least for the transport. So then I, my mom, she gave me money, then I just went there. Then we go to Niger, though. We have a friendly game because these boys, they are playing for their coach. I can't remember this Bejo man. I can't remember his name, man. Well, it's from Belgium anyway. Yeah. So they have like camp, the boys that are there, they always see their academy. Then I say, ah, but how can we play with these boys? They have like nice shirts. We, we don't have only like our baby. It's not even like the same color, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. <laughs> then they have like nice kids. I say, wow. I say, but boys, we don't need to fear about them. They just play football. Yeah. Then when we play this game, I score only the one goal mm. from the half of the field. I score the ball. So after the goal, then... I remember because my senior brother, every one of them said, Taiwo, you really did well today because you score. I think maybe they will take you. I say, well, even though they want to take me, I don't want to stay here because there they is no freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, then my, before with this white coach, he just went, he said, he now talking to me, he said, okay, now, I think they would like to talk to you to see you more. They want you to come to training. I said, but I come to training, I don't have money for transport. The way I'm coming from is very far away. And so you don't worry, they will try and give you money for transport. Since then, they're not trying to, to go there and train and do this. So after that, I've been training with the club. Then from there, then this coach went to Gabros. Yeah. I think back in the 2000, this coach went to Gabros. So from there, I was home in the Sherry, my area. I was just sitting down, just coming from Mox this night. I can remember. So I'm just coming from Mox. Then I see my team as well. What do you guys do in my area? They say, at the coach wants you, they say, you have to go to Onicha. I say, to do what? They say, you have to go there to go and play football because they want you. I say, oh. 
So this is my senior brother I'm talking about. Then he said, okay, T, what are you going to do? I said, well, I don't have any money. So don't worry. We'll try and find something for you. They didn't arrange money, everything. And I took the nice balls that night. Boom, yeah. Tony Shaw. Staying oh, wow. there, stay there, playing football. Like after that, the guy brought then. It's just a matter of time from then. And I said, okay, I realized that I think this is a big opportunity that is coming my way to, to see. Because I always remember that it's one man I, I missed there in, in a way. I said to this man one day, he always be the national team then. Yeah. And I said to him, the day they will give me a chance to play for Nigeria, I will play like maybe six or seven years or eight years. Then this man I say, are you sure? I say, yes. The day they will give me a chance to play for Nigeria, and I will play like maybe five or six years before I leave the position, this left back. Yeah. You see, wow. So and that's where we have my journey So, okay. so um, <laughs> people in the comments are saying his name was Maurice Coleman. Name yeah, yeah Maurice Coleman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Okay, so from Gabros, you went to um, Lobby Stars. Your no stars, yes. Yeah. So, um, how was the experience for you playing in the MPFL? Hey, because uh, from Gabros, uh, to make the long story short, because from Gabros, I was in uh, Gabros. Then uh, the president of Gabros now say they sent me to Enyimba. Mm. I say then because this period Enyimba they are doing well. I think Enyama was still there. I don't know. Maybe you still there. I think it was this period they are doing very well in Champions League. Maybe you can in tell us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So they are doing very well, like uh, in this situation, they are doing very well. This so then then I said to the president, this is not possible. They say, but you now travel from Onicha to Enugu. I go and see the president. The president say, okay, Taiwo, now you are my players. I said, President, this is not the way I want things to be. Because me, you can't just say okay, because in Nigeria, but the contract that's signed with them there is only one year contract. So now I'm a free player if you don't want to do it the right way. He said, No, no, we've already said, I said, Well, I'm not going to play for you because I don't want to play here. Yeah, this is where I want to play. He said, But if you don't want to play, then I'll go from there, I'll go back to uh, Makodi. Mm -hmm. Then I'll stay with my president, very lovely man, Dominic Ayofa. I'll stay with him in his house. Then I say, President, then, then the Gabo say they have to take money from Ayofa. They have to pay two million naira, I think, yeah. So then, then as the president's now say, you know, I say, President, don't worry. I think maybe this situation, then maybe we'll earn more money. We never know. So the president has okay, President, okay, you know what? The president now give like 1.5 million from my own pocket, then I bring 500,000, the money that they signed me before. So we give this transfer to them. I take the check by myself. I go to in a way. Then I go there. I give them the check. They sign out. Then I give me my release paper. Then I go back to Lobby Star. So when I was in Lobby Star, Maurice Coleman, this coach, was yeah. the head coach there. So I was there. My first game I'm going to play, I think we play calf game or something like that. I scored, I think, two goals in this game. In McCordy then. So everybody now says, wow. That is why this boy is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they could see it now. <laughs> okay, um, so moving forward in your um in club football in your career. So from lobby stars after playing, was it just one season you played in the MPFL? Yeah, I don't even I don't play so much game though, because in lobby stars I don't play too much game. I only play a couple of games. After that, they used to invite me as a home base to the national team. So I was very, very happy then as a wow. Look at our professional. Then I think they still have like, uh, if I remember, they still have Yakubu or Sazi was there. I think JJ was still mm. playing. Udeze. There's a lot of players that I can, you know, like I can't remember, but I know they are still yeah. there this period. Yeah, Yobo was okay. there. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you about this. How was it? Because if I'm not mistaken, you played for the Super Eagles and then you yeah. went to the Under 20 World Cup. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, as a player, that's not the usual trajectory. I mean, people will usually have gone youth level before. So how did it feel for you that even at that young age, they're already calling you to represent the big boys? Yeah, because to me, I have kind of things. I have a lot of confidence then. Hmm. This is my, like, I have this thing that if I say I want to do this, as I was little young, I would go for it. Hmm. God gave me this 
I always say to God, say, thank you very much for this opportunity that you gave in my life. If I want anything now, if I go for it, I will surely have it. So then we travel, blah, blah, blah. then we are like before we play this competition in Benin, in Bini, sorry, on that 24 Siasia. Because I was uh, with national team, like on that 23 then. So Ogunjo Binat called me, say, okay, Tyler, you have to go to under 20 to go and help them because they play one game in the bad one. Maybe they lost the game 1-0 or something like that. Mm. So the second leg, they have to play in Burkina Faso. So my first training with all this training, then I was there, see, I'm, see, I asked their coach, and I say, ah, are you the one they are talking about? I say, say, yeah, say, I say, I'm the one. He say, okay, let me see what you got. Maybe you know how to play football. <laughs> or oh, you are just, I was smiling. It's okay. So when we train in the first, they just give me a pushy ball from Bim! Score that. Score. 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 Very good left foot. I say, coach, this is my weapon when God gave me this. <laughs> then after that, we started talking. Then it's okay. I hope that. I say, coach, don't worry. We're going to Burkina Faso to go and win. I don't know how much we're going to win, but we're going to win the game to qualify for this World yeah, Cup. It's okay, right? No problem. So from there, we now travel to there. We win the game. Then I say, coach, I told you, you no. Know, he said, yes, you did. So since then, I was very, very happy. Then like, I have kind of like the goal. I say, God is all my family, my brother, every one of them. They are always giving me the support from yeah. when I was little to play football. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that on our 20 World Cup. This is a question that um, fans ask. I mean, a tournament that fans ask a lot to all. First of all, I mean, we lost in the, in the final, you know. So that mm -hmm. was obviously you. Everybody hates losing. From your own point of view, how much pain did you feel going all the way and losing in the final? Well, that final because uh, what made us lose that final because we I remember our centre defender take two yellow card. Oyekashi mm. Yapam. It was out, so I was a little bit panicked before the game. I said, ah, because we have Adeleye, and then we have Monday James. Both of them, they are kind of the same style of playing. You know what I'm saying? They always go on hard all the time. So, like, I was a little bit scared because before the game, I went, like, uh, to Sam Sessiasa's room. I said, Coach, how are we going to do tomorrow about the final? Because the Apam is not going to play. Then Dele and Monday James, they are kind of style. You see, but I said, but Coach, don't worry. I will try and at least talk to Dele because at least he will play on my side. And the uh, interest in perfect peace and the uh, bio. He will play on the right side also. So, like, then we started playing, playing, and I said, okay, boys. Then coach now says something. He now said, okay, boys, it's time for you guys to just forget about what you'll be thinking. This is his time that everybody's waiting for us. I said, coach, we know. We'll always make you proud. They will make our family. They will make Nigeria proud. Let's just go out there. Let's go and get these three points. So that way you go out there. We start playing, playing. At least they score us one. Messi scored one penalty. Then we scored one one. Obuki, I remember. So then after that, then the scores two one. I said, ah, this was kind of a little bit difficult for being trying to find the recolors. It didn't come. Like, so it's a really shame that we lost the competition because I think all the players that we, we play under 20, everybody, we are this group, it was the one of the best under 20 ever. Mm. I mean, possibly. I, I wouldn't disagree. I wouldn't disagree. <laughs> and let me ask you, in that same in that same tournament, because fans also ask about this, the game against Holland, I think, was it the quarterfinal of round of 16? The one that went to that penalties. Yeah. So yeah. I think he ended 11-10 on penalties. So you being yeah. in that kind of game during that shootout, what was going through your mind? How are you feeling? Be because for me, in that game, like when we're playing 0-0 zero, zero strata, we play everything then, then the uh, our coach Sam says, yes, and I see boys. Now it's time to just like, as soon as you see the goal post, you don't need to think about, I want to shoot on the left or the right. Just find your target and shoot the ball. Yeah. Because if you start saying, okay, I'm, this is goal post. I'm trying to, like, a Yama, Yama, for example, visit, Yama is going left and right. Say, Yama, please, can you stay in the middle, please? Let me just put this ball behind the net. So, <laughs> so from there, then, gradually was okay. Then I said, okay, coach, you know what? I will go first. At least if I go first now, if I score, then the rest player they have more have confidence. confidence and they to start. Then I say to them, the boys, as coach say, I don't want to start talking to anybody on the field that's so okay, like, okay, we have to shoot penalty, whatever. But no. I say, but for me, I just want 
just focus and just shoot the ball. So I go for we start playing, even though my lovely friend Mikael, he don't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> Because, so I remember because Mikel didn't want to play. I said, bro, you have to play because everybody is shooting. Yeah. So because I went, Mikel was on the bench with them. He didn't want to play. So then he scored. Like I can't, Dela Dela, yeah, Keita. I think our goalkeeper there was score. So Ambrose, I think, uh, let me see who me. There's a couple of players, maybe two or two players that miss in this game, this penalty. So when we're playing, we're playing, we're playing then. Then they say we will, everybody is scoring. They will say we start from. One zero zero, like we start again. So when they are striker, then I say to Ambrose, I say it's not going to change. It's going to your right side. I say T, are you sure? I say yes. It's not going to change. Just fit, like maybe you're going there, you will catch. Before you should put out pin, then I give him one. I say T, you there? I say because because I say as you want to shoot penalty now as a footballer, we have one special one weapon that if you shoot the ball, you have confidence. If I shoot on the right side, I will score. Yeah. yeah. So this is, but sometimes when you see the goalkeeper moving, they can change last minute. So yeah, every yeah. football, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. then when they lose his penalty, I was just standing then. I remember we can share and say, please, nobody should try and go and talk. Just leave. You know the title is from Lagos. So if you lose, they will know. <laughs> they will wait for him at Muritala Airport. No problem. It's from Lagos. But we, yeah. we are from all this no go. All this, uh, no discipline. So it's very difficult for us, like. But for him, it's from Lagos. If you lose, they will know. So they will take him. So that's okay. Then when I have this ball in my hand, I was just thinking, see, God, this is the right time to make Nigeria power, to make all this effort that we've been doing. I see people back home now. I don't know what they are thinking. In my mind, I see, T, I just want to score. So when I have this ball in my hand, I was just walking. Then I look on my left side. And I look at uh, our coach, Samson. He was doing his hand like this. Eh? Then I was shaking my head. Then he said, then he said, T, no problem, brother. So I was just walking. I pulled the border, then I said, okay, T. In my mind, I say, I'm not going to change. I will go the same place, the same accurate at least to put it. Even though the goalkeeper go to the right place, I will put the power. This was in my mind. I don't even think about anything else. So I put the ball down, then I shot the ball in. I said, now we'll go through. But it was kind of like, because a lot of players are scared. They say, Tyro, maybe you'll miss. <laughs> maybe you'll miss, yeah. It's, I mean, it's a penalty shootout. You can never be too sure. That's the... Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Okay, um, let's now progress in your club career. So from Lobby Stars um, in 2005, you joined Marseille. And I mean... You are joining Marseille. This is one of the biggest clubs. Absolutely, before. absolutely, what absolutely. Is, like when they, in fact, let's never even talk about when you signed the contract. What was the feeling <laughs> like? Just the first time that you got that phone call. That, ah, see, these people are interested in signing you. What was that like? For you? I was. I will never because uh, 2004, my first game I played with national team Nigeria in South Africa, in Mandela, I think yeah, in Mandela, something if I get if I get it right. So that was my first game. After the game, the president of Marseille, he called my room. I take my phone. I say, hello. Yeah, what is it? And he said, yeah, it's me. Uh, how are you? I was, I'm fine. So then he now say that um, I'm president of Marseille. <laughs> was, I was teaching. <laughs> <laughs> to, to make sure. <laughs> I was sitting looking at the phone. I said, oh. He said, hello, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm here. I'm just like, I don't, like, I was panicking. He said, no, this is not possible. How can you say to me, president, how? Oh, this is not possible. So, then I said, okay, what? They did not say, okay. I said, I have pen. Then they give me his number. He said, but if I finish, if I go back to Nigeria, then I will just try and call him. Mm -hmm. I was even scared, though. I would not lie to you. I was scared because I said, oh. I was very, very I was scared. I said, okay, what? Then after the game, then travel from South Africa to back to Nigeria. I'll just keep the number in one place. I don't even like, even one month, I don't even care that I want to call him. So one day I was just, I said to my senior brother, there's one man that called me, see president of uh, Marseille. You see, see how? I said, I don't know. And he now said to me like, I need to 
Say, I'm getting this number. That you see, but why you don't call and say, bro, I'm very scared because I don't know. Maybe it's uh, people they try to do something. Like that. So it's yeah. okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. So then in our area, then we have one place that we used to call. So if you want to call, you make a call. Give them the number. They will press international call then because I don't have money to buy any phone back in the day, 2004. Yeah. So then with my brother, with my sister, every one of them, we went there. We call. And he said hello. He was speaking a little English then. He said, yeah, I want you to come and play for Olympic Marseille. I said, wow. Then, I think this Marseille, they see have Drogba, they have kind of played at this 2004, before yeah. people go to Chelsea. Before Drogba joined. So, he said, I was very, very, I was even, when I wasn't talking on the phone, I'm not even talking like 100%. I was just scared a little bit. So, from there, then I saw Kibo, I said, well, I'm just go to La list. I don't have any phone, but as I have your number anytime, maybe if I have if I'm less busy, then I can call you to say hello. He said, okay, don't worry. I will try and find the way that we're going to do things. Mm -hmm. So this period, after opening the game, I was at home. Before you know, then there's one man they call uh, Mr. Abu. He's from Surulere. So Mr. Abu, now, I think they contact him or something like that. So he was always like agent of the players then, back in the days in Nigeria. So he said, okay, I said to him, first of us, I don't have money to do passports. If you have money, you can buy me money for passport. I don't have. I said, we don't even have anything to eat. I hope before I even think about, I want think to make yeah. I don't have any. But if you talk about football, I will play. But passport, I don't have money. So this man, I said, okay, don't worry about it. They want you want before you know, they fix the passport with his own pocket money. I say, Mister, maybe one day I will pay, pay you back. But I never know. But I'm not going to promise you that I will give you two thousand. <laughs> maybe one day. So both of us, we are going to the embassy to take French uh, visa to travel. Travel, we always go there. So we went there one first day, second day, the third day, they give me a visa. I said, oh, then I said to my, my sister, brother, every one of them, they are in Muritala airport. For the first time, my brother, every one of them will be there. They say, wow. See, I said, bro, well, maybe this is the way the God wants to answer our prayer. We never know, but yeah. I hope hopefully maybe one day, you guys will be all for to come this place. Come, Whatever yeah. Let me just go and try my luck. Okay. So when we I traveled from 2000, before 2004 finished, I was in Europe training with them. But because I only have this weapon, I said, okay, if I have the ball on my left, I will shoot. But if I shoot and score, you will surely say, oh, this left foot is not bad. So everybody have his own talent with the heart. Yeah. You know, it can be like uh, our legend back home, JJ Okosha. Oh, yeah. It's one of the best ever. Dribble with the ball. Everybody yeah. love him. So, as I was saying, so then, and I have the ball on my feet. Shoot. Training shoot. I shot a couple of goals. After that, then I say, wow. So, this player is it's not bad. So, I meet the president then. So, when I meet the president, then I say to the, so before the year is going to finish, then I say, president, you know, we have to, as a Muslim, we always do Salah in back home. He's a president. He's a Muslim also. Okay. And I said to him that as I'm going back home, I don't have money in my pocket because my father, sister, everyone, they know money. I said, I said, boy, if you can give me something, I'll be very happy to take back home. So when he said, okay, don't worry, worry. somebody's going to give you money in Paris. I said, ah, well, ah, this kind of happened with you now. Just well, let me <laughs> <laughs> because if you walk in, there's a lot of white people. Actually, I know the right one now. Yeah. He said, Don't worry, the person is going to know. I said, Well, so as I was going back home and I said, It's okay, are you tired? I said, Yeah, it's okay. Now, did not give me like 10,000 euros. I was off. I was like in my head, I was hot. I was off. I, mean... I was off. I said, Wow. This guy said, Okay, this is money, it's 10,000 euros. I said, wow. I was off. So throughout, I'm not gonna lie to you, even though we are on live video. I was I always say to my brother if I'm home, like I was in a plan, I have my bag. If I'm going as I'm wearing this cloth, I put the money inside already. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to the toilet, I'm not even leave my bag. It's the small bag is here. If I'm inside the toilet, okay. Money still here, it's not missing. <laughs> So I was there just like, so when I, before I even leave Europe, my brother, every one of them, I don't have a phone. Maybe I'm going to call them so I'm coming back home. Nothing. I don't have any phone to call anybody. So then I travel back home. 
So then this Mr. Abu was at the airport there because him, he have car, then it's okay, and see. What I said, Mr. Abu, it's okay, can you give me your passport? I said, Mr. Abu, why should I give you my passport? I said, maybe in case, I said, no, 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 Mr. Abu, no, no, I'm not going to give this passport because this passport is me, it's for me, not for you. Yes, yeah. I said, but if I give it to you, you will take it to your home, no? So let me take it to my own, my own place at home. So I can even show my brother, see, this is how passport look like, this is, mm -hmm. so that's kind of thing. So what are you... So he now say, I know it is, I say, Mr. Abu, I don't want to even fight you. But this passport, you do it for me, yeah? Then I say to you one day, I'm going to pay you. But if you want to start to do this kind of Nigeria, well, I don't like it. Mm. Because if you are honest, then I think we will go more farther with this kind of thing we need to be. Then he say, no, no, no. I say, well, if you want me to do it like in the other way now, I will do it, then you will not like it. So he said, okay, T, you can go ahead. So when they give me, I said, okay, when it's okay, I said, okay. When they give me the money, then this money they give me, before I even give any of my sister, I take 2,000 euros, then I give it to him at the airport. To the Mr. Even, Mr. Abu. I give it to him, I say, Mr. Abu, this money, I just want my like, care because you'll be so wonderful because both of us, we wake up very early in the morning, we go to the embassy, I meet you for my share, from my area to Surulere, from there we we'll go to the embassy. He was shocked as we say. I said, no, Mr. Abu, no, don't, don't worry, don't take me home. I will find my way to, mm. to get to my area. I don't even want anybody to even take me. So I was entering like from Boss Pokum, I enter my area. My brother even there in front of the house, just said, this tea. What are you doing here? Who has you to come back home? I was just smiling. I said, <laughs> <laughs> they are scared. They say, Abu, tea, why did you come back to Nigeria? You should stay there. Then, then I say to my my father still alive. Then my sister, every one of them, I say, okay, I just want you guys. Let's just sit in our, in our father's house now. Just sit. In. I say now, we don't need to beg anybody that before we want to eat rice, whatever yeah. I want to eat now, we can eat whatever yeah. I want to. Eat. See, where is the money? And you guys don't worry. God have already provided this money for us, though. Yeah. So from there, this night, there we are just even waiting. Maybe what are we going to them? It's okay. They are still waiting. What are going to eat? I say. Bro, you know, then I said to my, that's my, my our first son and the other one, because we have two boys in our, our we're all six with my sisters. Yeah. So the first one, then I said, okay, bro, see this money, please go and change this money so that we can have money at home. So that we change the money. We, do, at least after that, our father's, our family's house, then we do the painting, we do a lot of things. Everywhere is nice, at least. I will be very happy. Then I said to them, say, I'm very, always proud of you guys because, uh, when we don't have even food to eat, we always stay together. Yeah. I said, now, it's not now, now, because I have some money, I have to allow you guys to go. No. Whatever my power, I can, even I can have money to buy, whatever I want to buy for you guys, we will do it, to do it for you guys, because you guys have been there since we don't have nothing. The road is very, very raw when I was in Nigeria. Yeah. So then I said, well, we stay together, always, then... In our families, we used to see my father, everybody, we used to stay there. So my sister, she's married, went to his husband's house. They only... So since then, then, we started doing things. So then that is where my career started from. Okay. okay. So um, first of all, I have to say, honestly, that is an incredible story. Like, that is an incredible <laughs> story. I, I, I don't know if anybody in the comments have heard that story before, but I can tell you, I have no. not. You know, no. so no. just to hear of that entire experience, that's amazing, you know. And yeah. I can only imagine the feeling, like you said, when you got back and your family's like, ah, why are you here? You know, what yeah, are you doing? Yeah. but yeah. then the feeling that you had at that point, because you knew that even though it was just the beginning, but at least like now you could take what? care of your family, you know. If I was, I mean, if I even thought I was another planet, mm. because I was like, wow. <laughs> 